Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. For this week's project, I'm going to turn this vase out of olive. Now, I picked up this wood in Arizona. This is uh, an, it was just an olive log. This was one of the smaller logs, so this is the entire center of the log. I had to remove the pith, so lend itself to being a vase. So I drilled out the center, also drilled out the base so that there's no pith in the whole thing. Then I plugged the base. But I didn't do a whole lot of hollowing on this one. I left it heavy so that it could support something up top. So uh, olive wood, nice face. Let's turn it. This log is olive from Arizona. Thank you, Mark. It looks like this log has a lot more sapwood than heartwood. So rather than turn a bowl, this log is asking to be a vase. A vase will expose more heartwood if I turn away a lot of the sapwood. The log still has its pith that I will have to remove to prevent cracking. I had better get started. The wood is mounted between centers, a two-spur center on the spindle. For now, I will use my large bull gouge to cut away the bark and establish a round block. There is a lot of sapwood to hog off. but Not a pretty picture, but I do not care because I will smooth it off before I am finished. And of course, cut a dovetail tenon for a more secure mount. Now that the wood is securely mounted to the chuck, I can get serious about shaping the vase and expose that pretty olive grain. In addition to the dovetail tenon that it is mounted to, I need to cut another dovetail tenon on the top side. I want to be able to drill out the pith from both ends. My large bull gouge is still my favorite shaping tool, but the wood is still green and wet. This will be a rough turn. I will need to set the wood aside for a while to dry. Hmm. What does a vase look like anyhow? I guess there are many classic forms. My final task from this mount is to drill a 3 8 inch hole from the top to get rid of the pith. Then flip it around and mount it from the top dovetail. I'm drilling the base with a large Forstner bit, not only to get rid of the pith, but also to reduce the weight just a little bit. This will also help the wood to dry since moisture can escape from both sides. Then I coated it with PVA based wood sealer and let it dry for a year. Now that the wood is dry, I have to recut both tenons. 
Since I drilled from both ends, I do not have the original center divots as a guide. I grabbed a wood mandrel mounted to a threaded wood faceplate. The mandrel is slightly too large. Therefore, I am cutting it down to fit the bottom hole. My set of wood mandrels is quite handy. Once I trim them too small through use, I will simply face them off and add new pieces of wood to serve as the mandrel. About the time I rough turned this face, I also turned another piece into a spindle. I sealed it also and let it dry. Now I'm cutting a dovetail mount on one end. Next, I need to fit that plug to the bottom hole and glue the plug in. After the glue dries, it will serve to mount the wood, replace the pith, and plug the hole. After the glue in the joint is fully cured, I can cut off the sealer and final shape the vase. For the most part, I used a shear cut to slowly remove a minimum amount of wood and sealer. Then continue to remove wood until I like the shape. Then I can thoroughly sand from 80 to 400 grit. For this face, I am finishing with shellac friction polish. This is a large project for me to use shellac. Generally, I use shellac on smaller projects, but shellac will work and buff to a nice shine. Then part off the vase and sand the base. I am liking the Morse taper collet to hold a small sanding disc. After sanding, I can apply shellac to the base and buff the whole vase to a nice shine. I love the look of olive wood, even this piece where the heartwood is barely peeking through to show off its beauty. I thank Mark again for this wood. I could never afford to purchase dry olive wood. I had to start with green wood from urban forestry, and I like the result. This vase is beautiful. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield for safety any time that lathe is running.
I will see you next week with another woodturning video. Be wise in these COVID times, get your shot, and count your blessings. <laughs>